Back at the Victoria Briar, Prince Edward Island has all the better of it in a match with New Brunswick, leading 10-4 after 11 ends. In the final end, PEI skip Doug Cameron plays a neat double taker. New Brunswick third, Gordon Clogg, gives skip Jimmy Vance ice for an outturn draw. Vance, from the Beaver Curling Club in Moncton, is a veteran of two previous Briar competitions. He draws in for shot. Cameron likes to live dangerously, but his outturn runner is a trifle wide, and he pushes in a second New Brunswick stone. Vance wants to draw on the intern so that he'll have something to lean on. There it is, three for New Brunswick. But the Charlottetown rink wins 10-7. The Spud Islanders, three of whom had schoolboy curling experience, finished with a 5-5 record. In the second draw, Saskatchewan defeated Newfoundland, and now in the third, they are up against the Prince Edward Island entry, skipped by a previous Briar competitor, Jiggs McDonald. Here in the 11th end, Saskatchewan have a commanding lead of six, with the island province's last stones to come. Skip McDonald gives ice to his youthful shot maker, third Doug Cameron, who delivers last stones throughout the entire competition. McDonald, in turn, plays lead rocks. Ernie Richardson and his rink displayed coolness and accuracy in their shot making throughout the week's competition. Clean takeouts were the rule, not the exception. Doug Cameron, a product of the island schoolboy curling and a competitor in the Victoria Briar, takes the same ice, plays the same weight, and obtains the same result to count one. This didn't stop Saskatchewan as they went on to win their third straight victory. The exciting games of the week involved the Saskatchewan ring from Avonlea and the youthful contingent from Prince Edward Island. The Western team, skipped by Jack Keyes, included Bob Pickering and those veteran Briar competitors Glenn and Garnet Campbell. With Saskatchewan lying two in the 12th end, PEI skip Doug Cameron executes a perfect double take, leaving his rank lying three, his supporters happy, and the Saskatchewan rink in a conference. Jack Keyes, making his first appearance in Briar play, attempts to draw to the PEI rock. He's a little light, but comes in to lie shot. With PEI leading the game 6-5, to five, the Westerners have to make every shot count. Skipping the youngest rink at the championships, Doug Cameron makes a brilliant takeout to lie three. This is his fourth appearance in Briar competition. Garnet Campbell gives his skip the broom for this all-important takeout. And Keyes obliges. It heads straight to the target to count one for Saskatchewan. And so at the end of regulation play, the score is all tied up at six points apiece. With four rocks to go on the 13th end, Saskatchewan is shot behind a rather flimsy guard. Keyes attempts to set up better protection. But he doesn't quite make it. The Islanders third, George Dillon, calls for the takeout. And Cameron obliges. He gets it, plus a nice roll that puts the Maritime rock behind a solid guard. So now what? Well, how about another conference? It appears that the intent here 
is to draw in behind the guard and lie against the opposition rock. But it doesn't quite come off. It's wide open, and PEI has their big chance. Doug Cameron takes deadly aim and fires his last rock straight to the target. And so Prince Edward Island hands Saskatchewan its second and last loss of the 1961 championships. The same evening, these youngsters from down east went on to hand Alberta its only defeat during the week of round robin curling. In March 1963, the citizens of Brandon, Manitoba, Canada's wheat city, welcomed 44 of the nation's top curlers when they played host to the Canadian Curling Championship for the symbol of Canadian curling supremacy, the McDonald Briar Tanker. The youngest rink at the Briar, with an average age of 24, was another maritime entry, Doug Cameron's Prince Edward Island team. Strangely enough, they had more years of Briar experience between them than any other rink at Brandon. With Jock Llewellyn, Joe Saunders, and George Dillon, the Cameron rink is always considered a threat. Here, Jimmy Shields' Alberta entry is winning a 10-9 squeaker from the Island rink. Shields put his team together two years ago using Fred Story, Ron Baker, and Ron Northcott. Doug Cameron is a good example of the type of curler turned out through the efforts of schoolboy curling competitions, having won the PEI title in 1950 and 51. This is his fifth briar. Let's look now at some of the highlights of the 1965 Canadian Curling Championship. In the opening draw, Ron Franklin's entry from Nova Scotia found themselves in a tight battle with Doug Cameron's veteran crew from PEI. Here in the eighth, they're tied three all as Franklin's first stone comes in to push PEI back and lie one. With last rock and four stones in the house, Cameron is looking for a big end. This is Doug's sixth briar, and he's given a good chance to win it all. His out turn pushes the Nova Scotia shot rock back, leaving the Islanders lying two. This is the first trip to the Canadian Curling Championships for Franklin's Halifax rink, and they're destined to pull one of the week's biggest upsets. But not today. The maritime skip is narrow, misses the freeze, leaves PEI lying too. Cameron has lots of room left in the house. The 31-year-old accountant from Charlottetown is after three big points. And he gets them drawing to the forefoot. Prince Edward Island counts three to go ahead 6-3 after eight. They win the game 16-4.